Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching jQuery for Beginners Lesson 4 and in this video we're going to explore jQuery statements and what the dollar sign means. Okay then gang, so pretty much every jQuery statement starts with a dollar sign or the jQuery keyword, they're interchangeable, doesn't really matter which one we use. I'm lazy so I use the dollar sign, if you want to use jQuery, that's fine. So for example, in vanilla JavaScript, if we wanted to grab a specific ID from the DOM, we'd use something like this, document.getElementById, and then within brackets, the ID name. Now to do exactly the same thing in jQuery, we'd start the statement with a dollar sign that says, hey guys, we're using jQuery. Then we use the CSS selector name to grab that element within brackets. Now, don't worry about this bit for now. We're gonna cover that later in other tutorials. I just wanna focus on this here and what it means for now. Now, these two do the same thing, but there is one subtle but very important difference, and we're gonna explore that in the code. Okay then guys, so I know I downloaded all that code to work with for this tutorial series, but for this one lesson, I wanna just work in the console, so I've come to the netninja.co.uk, and I'm gonna show you that sort of difference between using the jQuery statement and vanilla JavaScript. So, if I wanted to grab this element right here, in normal JavaScript, I would say something like document.getElementById, and then pass through the ID name, which is page hyphen title, and that's gonna to return to me that object, that HTML object, right? Now, in jQuery, I'd do something like this. I'd use the dollar sign to say, hey, I'm using jQuery. Then I'd pass in the CSS selector that I want to get, which is hash page title. And it's a hash because it's a an ID return. And then that's going to return to me the same element right there. But this time, it's in an array. You can see that because of the square brackets. Now, this looks like a normal array. However, it's a jQuery object. And the jQuery object is based on the array type. So it has all the properties of an array, but it returns it looking like it's just a normal array. Okay? So what this means is that no matter what we ask for in the DOM using jQuery or what we do with it, the jQuery statement will always return back a jQuery object that represents that element. And this, guys, is because jQuery objects have many, many methods and properties attached to it that we can use, such as the animation ones or CSS. And that's what makes jQuery so easy to do things. So essentially, you can see jQuery a bit like a sweet wrapper, right? So in this example, the sweet would be an element, for example, this H2 right here, or multiple elements if you went after, say, all the H2s on the page, okay? That would be the sweet or the sweets. Now, when we grab something using jQuery, right, to grab these elements, it wraps them up in a wrapper, and it returns to us the full jQuery object, which has access to all the jQuery methods and properties, right? But at any point, we can unwrap that suite or element and return to ourselves the normal HTML element like this here without the wrapper, or in essence, a vanilla JavaScript object, right? So while an element is wrapped up in a jQuery wrapper like this, while it's returned to us like this, it has access to all the jQuery methods and properties, but when we unwrap it and get this again, then you just have access to those vanilla JavaScript methods and properties, right? So I'm gonna give you an example now. I'm going to store this in a variable, right? I'm going to say var heading equals, and we're using jQuery, so we use that dollar sign, and then it's hash page title. So now we've got that variable, right? So now we can say heading dot CSS, and we'll give it a position of relative. You don't have to worry what all this means at the minute, I'm just giving you an example. This right here is a jQuery method, so we're changing the CSS using jQuery, right? And in essence, we're just saying this here is that, so we're just saying page title dot CSS position relative, yeah? So we can do that, and now it gives it that style right there, and now what I'm going to do is use the animate method, and this time I'm going to pass in left 100 and that's going to scoot it to the left uh, to the right rather 100 pixels because we're saying we want it 100 pixels from the left so let's have a look at that now you can see it animated right over here over this way 100 pixels now that is the element when it's wrapped up 
in a jQuery wrapper. And you can see each time we're performing these methods, it's still returning to us that object in the jQuery wrapper because these are all jQuery statements, right? And you may say, well, these don't start with a dollar sign, but they do because this heading is just that. So each of these is starting with this, yeah? Okay, so now let's unwrap it. So how do we unwrap it? Well, it's like an array, remember? So say we've just got one element in here. This is the zeroth position, but if we have three elements in, we have the zeros, uh, first and second position, right? So we can just say heading zero, we're using array notation to grab that object right there, that element, and if we press that, this time it returns it to us unwrapped. Now, if there were multiple elements, we just use the index that we want to grab whichever suite or element we want to unwrap. And now, heading zero, if we do this, heading zero, this doesn't have access to things like animate because we've unwrapped the, uh, the, the object or the element. So if I try to animate something to the left, another 20 pixels, this isn't gonna work, right? This time we get animation, right? which is just an object. It's not gonna um, mean anything to you that. So when it's wrapped up, we can use those methods. When it's not, we can't use those methods, all right? So that is what jQuery statements are all about. Uh, they start with a dollar sign or a jQuery uh, keyword. Once we've used that, it wraps the elements up in a wrapper Therefore, we have access to all the jQuery library methods and properties, but we can also unwrap those elements whenever we want and just gain back our um, initial JavaScript object where we just have uh, the inbuilt JavaScript methods and objects to, um, and properties to use on it. Okay, so if you have any questions about this, feel free to drop a comment down below. Otherwise, guys, feel free to subscribe, share and like these videos and I'll see you in the next one.